Hello, my name is Ewan, and today I'll be showing you how to create and submit your very own textures for Minecraft Title Generator. So the first thing you want to do is actually create your texture. So to do that, you can use any of these textures here as a base. The best one to use as a base is flat. If you click this save button here, you can save the texture. And then you can edit that texture in any image editor that you want. So then here, for example, you can see all the characters. You just draw on it. Do whatever you want. So how these characters work is the white bit here you see that's the actual like front and back of the letter. The top bit is the top face of the letter and the bottom bit is the bottom face of the letter. And if you look down here this black bit is the outline colour. So for the texture to work properly all of this black bit needs to be the same colour. One important rule with textures is you cannot change the shape. So every single letter needs to be the exact same shape that you see here. You cannot for example shorten this bit or change the creeper face slightly. They have to be exactly as you found them when you open the texture. So that is how you create the texture. I will be using this texture here that someone else has made. I'll be showing you how to submit it by using this texture. So once you have your texture made, you want to go to the GitHub repository here. I'll link this in the description. This is the Minecraft title generator GitHub repository. There are written instructions here on how to do it, but I'm going to show you how to do it instead. So the first thing you want to do is make a fork of this repository. You can do that by clicking this fork button here. If you don't have a GitHub account, you will obviously need to make that first. So you create a fork of the repository. You could just leave the name and description the same. You only need, you can leave this enabled and then click create fork and then wait for it to load. Once it's created, you should then be in your fork. So when you're inside your fork, you'll know you're inside it because it says fork from here. You can go into the fonts folder. You can select the font that you're doing, which is Minecraft 10. Go to textures. And then up here it says add file and you can upload files. I'm not going to do this. I'm going to show a different way. But just what you would do is you can drag your file in here, upload it. And then click commit changes. But I'm not going to do that because I'm going to show the other way. So if you're going to do this way as well, when you're inside the font, there's a there's a textures.json file. So you click the edit button here and you would edit this file. But as I just said, I'm not going to do this, I'm going to show you the other way. So the other way is when you're inside the fork here. If you click this code button, you can open it with GitHub desktop. So I'm going to do that. I already have this downloaded. So I instead I'm going to do it in Chrome, which is logged into my main account so I can open it. So then you need to clone it when it opens in the app. If you have it in the app, you can then select a folder. So I'm going to quickly make a new folder to put it into. So then once you've done that and made a folder from URL mode, you should see the URL of your fork. You click clone and it'll copy all the files from the fork into a folder on your computer and then you just click continue. So once you've done that, you should find if you go to your folder that you made, you now have a copy of all the files. So the benefit of doing it through here is you have a lot more control over the files before you add them to GitHub. So if I go into the fonts folder, then the Minecraft 10 folder, and then the textures folder, I can grab this texture and just copy paste it over to textures. And there it is, I'm going to rename this because it needs to be an ID and the ID needs to be lowercase and only have underscores. So this is going to be called cherry underscore blossom. So you see that texture there, cherry blossom. So once you've added your texture, we need to go to the Minecraft 10 folder and the textures.json file. So then in this file, this is where it contains all the information about that texture. So I'm going to scroll down. And you should see there is an overlay section. So if you're making an overlay instead of a texture, you'd put it in the overlays folder instead. And then you'd add it to this overlay section at the end. But because I'm adding a texture, I look for the overlay section because it goes just before this. And then you should see a bracket here without a comma after it. Now this bracket is from the last entry in the textures. So the easiest thing to do normally is just copy this last one from the comma to the bracket. So just copy paste that. So you should have a brand new entry here. And then you put its ID in this, replace this one. 
It's a cherry blossom. And then you want to put the author for it. The author is who made it. So this is the most basic example of the uh, textures. If your name of the texture, for example, this one's cherry blossom, if that's the name, then you don't need to do anything else. But if, for example, let me open Blockbench, let's find one that is a bit different. You see deep dark wild update has brackets in it. If we look for this one in this file quickly, the ID is just deep dark, but then it has a separate name. And this name allows you to have a different name to its ID. So because it has more information in like this brackets bit, its ID is deep dark and its name is set to deep dark wild update. So the name is the visible name. And if you don't have this name, it'll only show as deep dark. So there are some other things you can do. If you are making a texture variant instead, if you look in Blockbench, some textures you see have some variants. So if I click on flames, for example, you see it has a soul flames. If I click on neon, it has a neon without the glow. You see the difference up there. For the variants, they are very similar. If you look for the, if you look at the smooth one, for example, it has a variance. And then inside variants, it has the exact same format as before. It has the ID and then a name. So the author for variants is not required if it's the same author as the top one. But you can have an author still in the variant if it is different from the main author of that texture. So anyway, let's go back down to our new texture. Cherry Blossom. So that's all we need to do. So let's just save that file. So now if we go back to GitHub, you should see that it shows us our changes that we've made. We've added this new section in here and we've added this texture. The next step to do would be to commit it to the thing. The reason I can't commit it is because in the this app I'm logged into the wrong account. So let me just fix that quickly. So now that I am in the correct account, it'll now allow me to commit it. And you see here, it doesn't actually let me commit it yet. That's just because I need to summarize what I've done. So let's just go add cherry blossom. And then we can click commit to main. Now there is one other optional step that we can do before this, which I'm going to show you how to do, because I would greatly appreciate it if you did it. If you go to the fork that you downloaded, and you should notice that in the top folder of it, next to the fonts folder, it's a scripts folder. Now in here, there is a compile.bat file. Now what this does is it will create the thumbnail icon for you automatically. If you don't do this, all it means is that I have to do it, but I greatly appreciate it if you did this for me, because it's a lot easier for me then to add your texture. So the only requirement for this to work is for you to have node installed. You can get node from the node website, so just node.js. And you can see it here. You just download the latest version. And once it's downloaded, then you'll be able to use this. So let's go back to the folder and then run it. And then you'll see it doesn't work. That's just because we need to do one extra step before we do that. So if we go to this bar here and we type CMD, it'll open command prompt. We just type in NPM. So that's N P M space I. We hit enter and we just wait for it to set it up. So then once it's installed, you can just ignore this stuff, it's completely fine. Once it's installed, you can close this, and then you can run the compile.bat. And then you just wait for it to process. Once that is finished, you can then go back to GitHub Desktop. If you click Fetch Origin, it'll refresh everything, and you'll see here that we now have a thumbnail that's been generated. So now we have all the files ready to commit, so we click Commit to Main, and Push Origin to push the changes. So once that's all done, you should see everything's disappeared. Go back to the website and refresh the page. And you should now see that it's one commit ahead. If you click on this, it'll show you the changes that have been made again. So if we go back, you see there's a contribute button here, and then you can click open pull request. At the moment, the edits are only in your fork. They're not in the main one. So this is you requesting to make those changes to the main one. So you just say add cherry blossom, if you want to add a description, you can. I'm not going to there. And then you click create pull request. And then you are done. There's nothing else you need to do. If I add a comment here, which I might do, it might be requesting changes or like a small edit, then obviously you'd make those changes. And you can do that again by just editing the files in your folder and committing the changes. And then that's all you need to do to make the changes. You don't need to make any pull request. It'll just get added to this one. 
So then that's all done. Then you just wait for me. I will come in. I will see that you've made a pull request if I'm on the right one. There you go. I will see that you've made a pull request. As you can see here, I will come in and be merge, merge. And there we go. That texture is now added to the plugin. I hope this helps. If you submit textures, that's greatly appreciated. Thank you for watching. Goodbye.